Morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Soz. Happy Sunday, and here is your weather forecast update nationwide for March 3rd, 2024. If you are brand new to the channel, then please do consider subscribing and also leave a like on the video while you're at it. Upcoming in today's weather forecast, we're going to be taking a look at far northern Queensland where heavy rainfall is forecast over the coming couple of days and then into next week with a developing tropical low on the Coral Sea, which we will get to later on in the video. Then we're going to go down south to northern New South Wales and southeastern Queensland where there are some more thunderstorms forecast today, but nothing crazy. Then we're going to be taking a look at a cyclone in the Coral Sea and also in Western Australian waters. They're both low chances of forming, but they're still there as a chance of formation. Starting things off with up north, we've got a strength trough which is going to be driving a lot of rainfall ashore next week that's going to be creating heavier than normal uh, rainfall accumulations where we could be seeing rainfall totals approach 500 millimeters in one or two locations and maybe even more for some mountainous areas between Innisfail and up towards Cooktown or Lockhart River. That strengthening trough has the potential to throw out a cyclone as well and will enhance the already moderate to heavy rainfall occurring across far northern Queensland for the next week. And in the forecast picture if we zoom in up there nothing crazy going on right now up in far northern Queensland there's not really much rainfall happening. Maybe a couple of showers or two expected today, but that's going to be the story until we get until about Wednesday. Wednesday evening, we're going to see a lot more moisture start to build itself up in the Coral Sea uh, over both the forecast models, the Eastern Blue Earth and the Access G3 model. Very happy with the forecast up until about Wednesday. And they're even in sync throughout the next 10 days. And I've been seeing comments about how it's very difficult to be making forecasts out around the 10 days. Off one forecast model, it is very difficult to be making long range forecasts. But when you're using a combination of two then it is quite easy and you can get an accurate picture out of it so these two forecast models inclined to say that we're going to be seeing an enhanced rainfall from about uh, next Wednesday evening onwards till about next Thursday and then beyond that a lot of rainfall can be expected we're going to be talking about 50 to 100 millimeters a day for areas between Townsville up towards Cooktown and that's going to be happening for around five days uh, in a row you can already see that onshore flow really driving moderate to heavy rainfall ashore indicated by the yellows oranges and in towards the reds now, the rainfall amounts here can be rather deceptive on the Access G3 model, but just be expecting around 10 to 15 millimetres per hour uh, for some locations in brief periods, which could last for around six hours uh, with heavy shower bands. These will be slow-moving shower bands, very typical for wet season activity. I believe the peak of the rainfall will still be Saturday morning from what we were seeing yesterday. In fact, it looks like it might just die off a little bit on Saturday morning at this stage. But definitely from Thursday to Sunday, we're looking at enhanced rainfall until what looks like a tropical low starts to build up and this rainfall is going to be sucked further north north of Cooktown up towards Lockhart River and Thursday Island and Weeper uh, in the far northern reaches of the Cape York Peninsula. So it looks like Kansas actually got a better forecast in terms of total rainfall accumulation. They're no longer looking at about 500 millimetres, maybe only about two to 300 millimetres, uh, but definitely by around next Sunday and Monday we're going to be seeing this enhanced rainfall up here in the uh, Gulf of Carpentaria and then into the eastern extremity, the northern extremities rather of the Coral Sea and that's going to be driving the fuel for this tropical low to really start to form uh, for next Monday and Tuesday. Now the models have been pretty consistent with this tropical low forming over the past couple of uh, days actually so I'm inclined to say that there will be something happening up here by around next Saturday or Sunday. Again we're going to have to wait till about Friday the 8th to really get an accurate idea of what's going on up in the uh, northern parts of the Coral Sea but it's something that we're going to be watching over the next four or five days on this channel so if you want further coverage on this potential tropical low then please do stick around to this uh, weather channel because I'll be providing it that's for sure. And there's also going to be a tropical low around Vanuatu and that's been very consistent in the forecast for around three or four days now so I'm inclined to say that there's going to be enhanced activity in terms of tropical low monsoon activity across the Coral Sea over the next uh, probably uh, week or so. And that could turn into cyclone activity from next weekend onwards. We'll be watching this very closely. There'll be detailed updates on the channel regarding this situation because, again, if this if something does form, then it will likely impact land areas at some point in its life. That's just what coral sea systems do, and thus there will be coverage on this channel. Definitely an enhanced monsoon. That's what we're looking at across far northern Queensland um, and also into uh, parts of the Northern Territory as well, but I'll touch on that later on in the video. So yesterday we were looking at rainfall accumulations approaching 500 
300 millimeters. They've been dropped off slightly now to about three to 400 millimeters. Again, maybe this isn't the most accurate model to be looking at for rainfall, considering it can completely upplay or downplay it, but definitely 200 millimeters possible around Innisfail and Tully. Like I said, Cairns kind of out of it. Townsville as well, only about 50 millimeters, and Cairns about 50 millimeters as well. In the Daintree, there will be spots to pick up up to 400 millimeters here. The rainfall forecasts really can't iron in on those mountains that we see because they're just not high resolution enough. So in the right mountain or right valley up here, we could be seeing up to four, 500, maybe even 600 millimeters fall. And then as you get up towards Lockhart River, and this is where we're talking really, really remote far northern Queensland, you're talking probably more a rainfall, but overall just more unpredictable rainfall. And then up in the northern parts of the Cape York Peninsula, just all round above 100 millimeters expected, maybe one or two spots approaching 250 millimeters. So yeah, quite a wet week expected from next Wednesday onwards. It's going to be really quite wet. There's a risk of flooding, so make sure you are staying on top of the Bureau of Meteorology as well. At the end of the video, we're going to be taking a look at the tropical cyclone forecast up here, but now we need to dive down south and take a look at Queensland and northern New South Wales. So we do have a string of thunderstorms that could be firing up tonight in towards Queensland. They could end up being severe as well, with damaging winds and spots of heavy rainfall, and they might also be providing some rainfall tonight and into tomorrow night across the Bundaberg Rock County. Hampton and Wide Bay sort of area, which desperately need at least 20 millimeters or so. They need more rainfall than that, but 20 millimeters will be a welcome blessing for there. That's for sure. But they'll be easing out of New South Wales by tonight. And as you can see, as we switch things over to the Eastern Rivia forecast, they are expected far up tonight from northern New South Wales, but they will be extreme northern New South Wales into the Brisbane and Gold Coast metro areas before they run up the coastline. These, again, don't look like severe thunderstorms. They're going to be strong thunderstorms, but nothing severe. Uh, they will likely have severe thunderstorms storm warnings in place. The Bureau of Meteorology just as a precautionary uh, thing, I guess, um, but definitely nothing crazy in terms of strong, dangerous thunderstorm activity. But again, these thunderstorms over the next 24 hours could be dropping rainfall totals about 25 millimetres in some places, maybe even more as well. Brisbane itself expecting 25 millimetres from this thunderstorm round and also inland parts of Queensland, 25 to 30 millimetres as well is possible around Charleville, Roma, and then across to uh, some of the more rural uh, communities and cattle states in central Queensland. So quite a lot of rainfall is possible there. As you switch it over to the next three days, the thunderstorms are expected to be quite consistent in terms of frequency in the evening, um, especially Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday night across parts of Brisbane and up towards the Sunshine Coast, we could be seeing 70 to 80 millimeters fall. Um, so yeah, a little bit of rainfall certainly expected there. We're hoping for quite a bit of rainfall to fall around the Rockhampton, down towards Bundaberg, Wide Bay, and then maybe even up towards Mackay sort of area. That would be some great news indeed, considering they're really struggling to, in terms of rainfall so far this wet season, but the thunderstorms from this forecast look very patchy, very unpredictable as well. So I'm going to struggle to make a rainfall prediction here. And I would say most communities between a line inland from Brisbane towards Roma, up towards Emerald, and then across towards Mackay, it's very difficult to say, but it's going to be a zero to 20 millimeter sort of prediction here over the next three days, especially Monday night, which does look like the wettest night out of this thunderstorm event. Again, it just doesn't look like... Um and they're going to be widespread, squally thunderstorms. They're just going to be pulse thunderstorms at this time. Maybe one or two of them could be quite strong, close to severe even on uh, Monday night. Tuesday night, they should be easing off at this point before we get this onshore flow, which will be providing that welcome rainfall across parts of central Queensland. But again, just a very difficult forecast to make in terms of rainfall. There'll be thunderstorms. We just don't know when and where at this point. And I know that that basically defeats the uh, point of me being a forecaster, but I'm just saying it's going to happen. Monday morning, we're going to know what's going to be happening happening regarding these storms. So if you're really keen to understand what's going to be going on with this thunderstorm event, then watch the Monday morning video because it's kind of hard to tell at this point. There will be places that pick up 20 millimeters and there'll be places that pick up zip. So uh, a very unpredictable forecast we're making anywhere north of Bundaberg and up the coastline. Rainfall accumulation over the next five days does look a little bit healthier, especially for the coastal areas. Bowen expecting 10 millimeters, Mackay expecting 25 millimeters or so, Ogmore expecting 15, uh, Rockhampton also expecting 15. Um, um, and if you were to look at this across other forecast models as well, you're looking at consistent 15 to 30 or 40 millimetres here. So rainfall is likely going to be falling for these locations between that 15 to 40 millimetre mark over the next five days, uh, because that's what all three major forecast models are saying. That is very welcome rainfall for this part of Queensland. So um, there will be up to 40 millimetres, maybe even 50 millimetres. There is the risk of flash flooding in some areas, especially built up areas or areas that already have saturated river catchments. So 
So yeah, just make sure that you're on top of the weather and on top of the weather radar as well over the next five days because Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday could be a little bit wet across areas extending between Bowen down towards the Sunshine Coast on Queensland. But unfortunately, the rainfall isn't going to be penetrating inland. Central Queensland looks like they're going to miss out on the rainfall big time, which is probably quite disappointing to parts of Central Queensland, especially around Longreach. Um, and Winton that do desperately need some rainfall as well. Now for the final part of this storm update, we're going to be taking a look at tropical cyclones up in the northern parts of uh, the Australian region. Now we do have a strengthening monsoon trough that's expected to develop across northern Australia and that has the potential to spin up two tropical cyclones. The more likely scenarios we see a system near the Cocos Islands and the less likely scenarios we see the system around the um, Coral Sea area, but there's still the chance that both of these systems form. I'm giving both tropical lows a 10% chance of formation, but again, you're going really long range at this time, so it's a very uncertain forecast to be making, but we will just take a look at this forecast just to see what is on the forecast, if that makes sense. So starting things off with the Coral Sea system, because I know that's what most of you are interested in, especially if it is going to be a land impactor, but it's going to be until next Sunday until we really start to see something start to develop off the Cape York Peninsula. Sunday morning, by the looks of things, you're starting to see this defined spin really wrap itself up in the Access G3 model. The other forecast model still calling for that tight monsoonal circulation here. The Eastern Relief and the GFS both calling for it as well. I mean, the Eastern Relief may be less so than the uh, GFS model, but the Access model really calling for this tight turn to start to spin itself up. And by next Monday and Tuesday, we've already got something really trying to spin itself up into a tropical cyclone. Reciprocated on the other two major forecast models as well. If we were to look at the Eastern BF model, they've got a center of circulation over the Cape York Peninsula. The GFS model is a center of circulation up closer to um, PNG. But the axis is that defined center of circulation here offshore from the Cape York Peninsula. And considering all three forecast models have a tropical low developing in the Coral Sea, at about nine to 10 days out and a relatively similar location. I do reckon that this is going to happen in at least some degree from what these forecast models are saying. I reckon there is a degree of certain here that we should definitely be watching out for. And by next Sunday, Monday and Tuesday, we're going to have to be paying very close attention to the Coral Sea systems because we don't know what exactly they're going to be doing. It looks like this one swings back into the Gulf of Carpentaria, but we have had some forecasts where we see an enhanced tropical uh, low at least or a strong monsoon trough swing down and impact New Caledonia and Vanuatu, which also does look like a potential on the forecast. So it's something that we're going to have to be watching very closely, that's for sure. A land impact, it's really too early to tell. It's too early to forecast impacts, too early to forecast rainfall, and too early to really warn people about what's going to be going on up here. But certainly expect enhanced rainfall come next Saturday and Sunday, the 9th and the 10th of March. So yeah, just be watching this forecast very closely indeed. Now we're going to switch things over to Western Australia where we're looking at a potential strong tropical cyclone. I've basically spoiled the forecast at this time, but um, we do actually have a tropical low starting to develop now around the Cocos Keeling Islands. It's a, just a broad, messy spot of convection right now. Uh, some strong thunderstorms starting to fire up around the centre of the circulation. This looks like it's going to be our next true tropical cyclone here and maybe the first cyclone in West Australian waters this cyclone season. However, where it forms is going to dec uh, declare where it's going to get named. Now, if we look at the Access G3 model, it takes it until about, what is it, maybe Thursday evening to fully develop gale force winds around the center of the circulation. So it won't be getting named as a tropical cyclone until Thursday evening, Friday morning. And right now, the center of circulation is teetering. It is teetering on the edge of where the Bureau of Meteorology names tropical cyclones. If it is 50 kilometers towards the, um, what is it, the west, it is not going to pick up a West Australian cyclone name. And it, it, I mean, it won't be a tropical cyclone in the West Australian waters, won't it? And that will just extend West Australia's run without a true tropical cyclone, which is, uh, it's been, already been a very long run indeed. Now, I did also say yesterday that this cyclone season has been disappointing in terms of activity. It certainly hasn't been disappointing in terms of impacts that's for sure it's been quite a dangerous season in terms of cyclone impacts I mean cyclone Jasper was a huge cyclone in terms of the rainfall that dumped the wettest cyclone season on record but yeah we're just hoping that this season stays stays as quiet as possible but a storm to really take the energy out of the West Australian area would be great news because the sea surface temperatures and the atmospheric conditions are primed for a strong tropical cyclone of category 5 proportions to move through now I'm certainly waffling at this point so I'm going to keep this very short and Sweet. You can see it moves through the Indian Ocean towards Mauritius and Madagascar as a strengthening system, nothing too crazy, and it does get up to severe tropical cyclone status. 
And again, could still be a quite strong system, but it's no worry at all to Australia. It's about Australia's length away from the Australian continent. So at this point, not a concern at all. It's going to be these two systems in the Coral Sea that we will be watching. And yeah, that basically does it for this weather update this March 3rd. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then please do consider leaving a like and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'd like to give a special shout out to the people on screen there, our channel sponsors for this month. Your support is greatly appreciated. And the image today is titled The Fads, which are fishing spots out um, offshore from Western Australia, about 40 nautical miles offshore or so, taken January 21st, 2023. Boy, do I want to go back out there. We caught some amazing fish that day. I think we ended up with uh, two big Jewfish which is quite rare for West Australian um, conditions, fishing conditions right now. Or am I just a really bad fisherman? Let me know in the comment section down below. But great having your company this morning. I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.